Here on FFT in five, we're going to talk about some training camp battles and players whose ADP may rise or fall in the next few weeks. And let's get right into it. I'm Adam Azer with Dave Richard here. All right, Dave. So some players that you think have the most to gain or lose in terms of average draft position. I'm sure that's going to be linked to training camp battles, but who are some names off the top of your head? Well, it's not just training camp battles. It's how they look in the preseason. And the first name and, and a name that we should definitely get into on the Fantasy Football Today main podcast is Kyle Pitts. And the fact that people are probably going to end up reaching for him once he makes a couple of big plays in the preseason. Because everybody wants to have the flashy new toy. Everybody wants to have the great new rookie. And he's he's got a chance to be really, really good. I know that rookie tight ends traditionally do not put up good numbers. But he's not exactly a tight end, per se. He's more of a wide receiver, and I think people will enjoy having somebody who could break out in a receiver-type role while using him as a tight end. He's someone whose ADP, I think, can go up. I also think Daryl Henderson, who we won't see in the preseason, his ADP could go up, especially if things happen to other running backs. Miles Gaskin gets hurt, or Mike Davis doesn't look good. People will start gravitating toward Daryl Henderson, and the only way his ADP will go down, because we won't see him in the preseason, is if he misses time in practice or if the Rams make a big splash at running back. And I don't know if they're inclined to do that. It sounds like they like Daryl Henderson as their main guy. But let me clarify something. You said people might end up reaching for Kyle Pitts, but you also seem to make the case for drafting him. So what do you think? Right now he's going in the fifth round, about 56th or so overall. Yeah. What do you think is going to be a reach? What do you think is going to be too early? I, I think 56 is a little too early. Like if you have to have them and, and you're there in, in late round five, then sure, you go ahead and you take them at that spot. But I think some people might gravitate toward taking him as early as 45th overall, 48th overall. Kind of crazy when you think about it, but if they think that he's got potential to get 1,000 yards in his rookie year and eight touchdowns in his rookie year, then they're going to take him. There will be at least two or three people in every single draft that are going to be super excited about Kyle Pitts. And if the flames are hot from preseason action and training camp reports, then yeah, you're going to see him go as a top 50 pick. I would prefer to get him, of course, after round five. I just don't think I'm going to get him very often at that spot. All right, so training camp battles, a lot of running back battles, obviously. And, you know, the, the Bucks backfield, it is one to watch. We want to know who the starter is going to be. Jones and Fournette, their ADP is almost identical. But considering Geo's there as well, I'm not sure there's too much room for them to go up because I don't think anyone is going to just run away with the job. I think Giovanni Bernard is locked into the passing downs role. And I took a look at what that passing downs role meant for Fournette and Rojo last year. They combined for 64 catches, 398 yards, one touchdown, 10 drops between the two of them, five each actually, and eight quarterback pressures allowed over 70 pass block snaps. Giovanni Bernard, by comparison, and he's on a different team, of course, he's in Cincinnati. He had 47 catches, 355 yards, three touchdowns through the air, one drop, Four quarterback pressures allowed, over 72 pass block snaps. Clearly, he's the better fit in that passing downs role. So that means that Fournette and Rojo figure to split the rushing downs workload. And I think Fournette just a, a for, Fournette is the better all around running back, and he finished last year strong. And if he plays okay during training camp and the preseason and all that, I think he begins the year as the main running back, not to say that he's going to get every single carry. Jones will get his too. They'll split it, but it'll be in favor of Fournette. And Fournette at least can catch a couple of passes, and, and Brady will know that. Jones won't see many targets. And if Jones makes mistakes as a rusher, his playing time will shrivel up, and that'll help Fournette. So I like, I like Fournette the best, but I always feel weird whenever I draft him, and I've taken him as high as round seven, as late as round ten. I just I, I feel like it's it's just not it doesn't feel right to take Leonard Fournette because the the floor is just it's a zero. The floor is he screws up, Rojo looks good, Geo takes over, and Geo's a third option now for Aaron's anyway. If both those guys screw up, Geo's the main back. It makes me want to take Giovanni Bernard with a late pick, honestly. All right, so there are some other battles to watch. We will talk about them on the full-length version of Fantasy Football today. Michael Carter, Trey Sermon, Javante Williams, what kind of ADP boost or fall could they see uh, during training camp? We will discuss that. That's Dave Richard. I'm Adam Azer. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow on FFT in 5.